More truck owners are switching to Ram, which means more people with holiday spirit are switching to Ram. And more people with not so much. More people who love the cold. And more people who don't. More good Samaritans. More good neighbors. And more people covered in tree sap are switching to Ram. Church Street in Burlington is quiet, but a couple miles away, it'll be rocking on the UVM campus. It's a matchup of conference champions. Last year, Vermont won the America East for the fourth time in the last six years, while Bryant won its first NEC title. Both are now in the same league. It's the game of the year in the America East. The new kids in town, the Bryant Bulldogs, take on the longtime neighborhood king the Vermont Catamounts. We welcome you to Patrick Jim, Robert Lee, and former Michigan Wolverine Tim McCormick with you. Tim, great matchup tonight. Vermont has dominated this league for the better part of 20 years, facing a new challenger tonight. Bryant, in its first year in the league, brings in a high-powered offense. Robert, a, a terrific battle, I expect, here. And when you're thinking about both these teams, you've got the preseason one and two. You also have two teams that played in the NCAA last year. I expect an extreme battle of tempo, and more importantly, this is the first of a long-term rivalry. Now, I've got some guards I want you to focus on. For Bryant, Sharif Gross Bullock, a sensational senior score, 17 points per game, an absolute stud, coming off 29 against Binghamton. And on the other end, Vermont has Dylan Penn, a Bellarmine transfer, killer mid-range game, lethal off the dribble in his last contest against UMBC, 19 points, 9 rebounds. For Vermont coach John Becker, tonight could be a record-setting night. He is currently tied with longtime head coach Tom Brennan for the school record in wins, 264. If he were to win tonight, he would be the all-time winning as coach in Vermont basketball history. On the other side, what a fantastic job Jared Grosso in the middle of that huddle has done. He took over a team that won three games the year before he arrived, had them in the NCAA tournament in his fourth season, and is now navigating a new conference, the America East. Huge crowd on hand here tonight here in Burlington on the shores of Lake Champlain. Should be a great atmosphere for what amounts to really one of the best games of the America East. You mentioned Vermont picked first in the preseason poll. Bryant in its first year in the league picked second. And you mentioned the extreme battle of tempos. Vermont, a team that likes to execute in the half court, kind of grind you out a little bit. Bryant wants to get out and go. There, there's no question the Catamounts want 16 points. And Bryant plays the fastest pace in all college basketball. They would love 85. And, you know, talking earlier today to Charles Pride, who is the stud for this Bryant Bulldog squad, he said, my goal today is pretty simple. I want to leave this building as the most hated man on the court today. <laughs> <laughs> and his coach referred to him as a sweetheart yesterday, but he said when he's on the court, he's a warrior. Yeah, I, I do think that when you're looking at fast pace, it's a lot easier to slow a game down than to speed it mm. up. So the way you do that, low turnovers and control the boards. That is Vermont's number one job. John Becker in his 12th season, 264 victories. And he has just dominated the America East in particular. He has won 84% of his America East games, 149 and 28. He is a six-time America East Coach of the Year and a five-time America East champion. Bryant brings the heat on offense. They're number seven in the nation in scoring couple squads inside of the top seven, Missouri, Gonzaga, and Arizona. They play a fun style, a lot of different defenses, and you're going to see full court pressure and then fall back into a 2-3 zone. Jared Grosso's team averages 86 points per game. Bryant in the road, black jerseys, Vermont in the home, white. Our referees tonight, Clarence Armstrong, Matt Potter, and Tony Chiazza. And it will be Matt Varetto to jump it up with Antoine Walker for Bryant. Big crowd at Patrick Gym in Burlington, Vermont. Both teams come in 1-0 in America East play. 
Vermont played a very tough schedule. They've got a seven and eight overall record, but they've won five of their last six. Bryant has won four out of five, 10 and four on the year. Man-to-man -man defense by Vermont. They're the best in the America East at containing the dribble. Walker's game opening three is off the back iron. The rebound is fought for and it is controlled eventually by Vermont. Vermont starting five, they start five seniors. Dylan Penn, the Bellarmine transfer that Tim talked about. Finn Sullivan is one of their keys, as is Robin Duncan. Free throw line jumper is up and in for Matt Barreto. Bryant also a veteran starting lineup. Four seniors, one junior. Quick three from the right wing is off the back iron and it's rebounded again by the Catamounts. On makes, Bryant will full court press. On missed shots, they'll fall back in their 2-3 zone. The free throw line is the area that the Catamounts are gonna try to attack. And it looks like they've got Varetto at that free throw line. He made the first jumper of the game. Down to eight on the shot clock. Inside for Varetto, reverse layups up and in. And don't blink after a made basket because Bryant is unfazed by taking the ball out of the rim. The average for possession for Bryant, 16 seconds. This one lasts about 11 seconds. It ends as the first two have with a missed jumper. That one by Sharif Gross Bullock. So Bryant's off the mark to start the game. The foul line is going to be wide open for Vermont. It's the area of the court that Bryant just doesn't want to cover. Spinning into the lane is Finn Sullivan, still six on the shot clock. Here's Penn into the corner for a three. And a foul on the rebound against Bryant. Mm -hmm. You know, going inside to Barreto, I talked to him before the game and he said he knows that the opposing center for Bryant is the catalyst of the offense. He said that he spent the week shooting a lot of mid-range jump shots because he thinks that's the shot he's going to get tonight. The foul was caught on Bryant's Antoine Walker, first foul of the game. You see that hole right at the foul line? Mm. If you flash a man, you're going to be wide open. Verretto buries the three. Seven points for Matt Verretto to start the game. He started the UMBC game hot as well. Blocked. Here come the Catamounts running three on two. And they'll slow it up and look for the secondary break. Can't ask for a much better start for Vermont. Well, with all the pressure that Bryant brings, you have to ask the question, does Vermont look composed versus the Heat? Mm. The answer is absolutely. Again, this is a veteran team that starts five seniors, down to four on the shot clock. Varetto had a ball knocked away, gets it back with one to shoot. Duncan, desperation three, and it's a shot clock violation. <laughs> You know, pretty amazing that Verretto transferred out from Delaware to Yukon and he was playing IM ball <laughs> just with regular students when he decided to put his name into the transfer portal. I, I think that he has been a real key for Vermont this year. They had recruited him out of high school. He actually graduated with a finance degree from Yukon as a foul is called. He had already accepted a job in New York City in finance, said, you know what? Maybe I'm going to give it one last go. Went into the portal, like you said, and now he's here in Vermont with the first seven points of the game. Can you imagine the poor engineering student that's a freshman <laughs> at UConn matching up against Barreto? <laughs> Strong take to the rim and a score for Earl Timberlake. And the value of the bucket, yeah, you get two points, but it allows you to set up their press. This is really the best thing that the Bulldogs do. Earl Timberlake, a transfer from Memphis, started his career at Miami, former top 40 recruit, averaging almost 16 points a game. This is Penn. Nifty spin move, lays it up and in. And his coaches told us about the sort of crafty game he has. A very creative mid-range. Gross Bullock turns it over. And even when Vermont's had opportunities to run on the break, they have deliberately slowed it down. 
So they do not want to get into a track meet, even when they've got maybe a three on two or some situation like that. Three from the corner. Strong rebound for Vermont and Robin Duncan. Fifth year senior from Evansville. Now, Vermont is actually rated last in the nation in offensive rebounds, but against the zone, they felt like they could really have some success. Extra pass for the corner three. And the rebound eventually comes away to Timberlake, who runs the break, pushes ahead for a rim run, and it's out of bounds off of Bryant. Matt Floretto has been the best player on the court. No shot blocking inside. Get to the rim. This is the start the Canamounts were looking for. Just a pea-sized amount of Lumi applied between your butt cheeks like this. I will demonstrate. Just kidding, I won't. Like this. We put Lumi to the test and compared it to a shower. 12 hours after a shower with soap and water, the average crotch has an odor score of five to six out of 10. 12 hours after a shower and applying Lumi, you're at a zero out of 10, no odor all day. I'm not a mathematician, but I think it means that Lumi is infinitely more effective than a shower alone. So just take a shower or shower with Lumi and be zero out of 10. What happened to your New Year's resolution? My resolution is to eat better. Epic Stuff Crust. Better ingredients, better pizza. I'm eating better. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing in my house? Don't answer. I thought you said you weren't coming back. To redeem this offer. The guy who made Vermont basketball jump on the map, Tom Brennan. 264 career victories, most notably a win over Syracuse in the NCAA tournament. Who can forget that shot from the parking lot, TJ Sorrentine. His name is on the court here in Burlington. And he still comes to just about every game. There he is on the left wearing the fashionable scarf. Uh, Somebody uh, didn't tell him about not wearing white after Labor Day. Miami Beach linen. <laughs> I had a chance to talk to him and, and I asked, what do you think about the matchup tonight? And he smiled and said, I'm going to tell you right now, the American American East title comes through Vermont. And, and he's right with the start of this game. 9-2. to two, And the defense we thought would be really impactful hasn't worked. Catamounts 57% and zero turnovers. Mm. And look at that, nine American, American East championships. All in the last 20 years. And we talked to Coach Becker about Coach Brennan. They're still very close. And Coach Becker said, I still do defer to him. His name's on the court for a reason. He's the legend up here. But Coach Becker, a chance to pass Coach Brennan with his 265th win here tonight. Three-pointer from the left wing. And strong athletic rebound there for Antoine Walker. Inside it goes. Nice move, and the layup is up and in. I, I love that possession because if you drive and get to the rim, Vermont has almost no shot blocking at all. There's going to be no resistance at the rim. Vermont breaks the press smartly again. And a foul away from the ball. And if this is on Walker, it would be his second. Uh, let's take a look at his last bucket. I'm a big fan. Numbers I like about 14 and 7. He is, was at Rhode Island last year. When he steps on the court, energy level goes up. Right now, this is going to hurt Brian a great deal on the defensive glass. They're going to go to the monitor here. And Coach Grosso told us that foul trouble has really plagued Antoine Walker, getting cheap fouls early. And that's exactly what happens here. He goes to the bench with two fouls as Miles Latimer checks in, a transfer from Bucknell previously at Stony Brook. All right, let, let's take a look. And you're going to see underneath, right in the middle, was, was that a little bit of a flop, or did that look real to you? I, I don't, I don't see anything that that is flagrant in that situation. Let's take one more look. You'll see in the lower right-hand corner, number one gets the chicken wing out a little bit on Dylan Penn. Yeah, that might be a little over dramatization of that contact. One thing to consider, though, is that Walker, as a veteran player, has to have more awareness. There's nothing else going on, and the referee's about seven feet away. Right. There, there's nothing else for him to see. There was no reason to make contact there. And I think that's the key point. There was no purpose to this contact. It's not like he was helping his position or trying to contest the shot. He just 
it's going to be a foul either way. Whether or not it's a flagrant foul, we'll see. Coach Grasso has been saying all throughout the day that his number one goal is for his team to be nasty and physical and tough. And when the players hear that all day, that's their mindset and psyche is to hit somebody. So it is a common foul, but it is still the second foul on Antoine Walker, who averages 13 points and six and a half rebounds a game. If you look at the balance of Jared Grasso's team, they have four players scoring in the top 12 in this league. On the other side, the Catamounts, they don't have anybody within the top 12. Their top scorer, Dylan Penn, is 14th in the league, which tells you a little bit about how spread out the scoring is for Vermont, and they're also just a lower scoring team. They average 18 points a game less than Bryant. But they have the advantage so far here, down to five on the shot clock. Nice give and go, Duncan lays it in. Also in for Bryant is Chauncey Hawkins, the fourth, a transfer from St. Francis, chance for three. Robin Duncan is a special player. His two brothers are older. They played on this team when the last nine years they had a Duncan on the court. And I asked Rob, Robin, what was the, the situation when you were growing up as the youngest? And he said it was rough because his, his older brothers made him stand under the basket and rebound for them. <laughs> and he said, so because of that, I'm a really good rebounder, an excellent passer, but I'm not good shooting the basketball. He totally blames it on his older brothers. Ernie, class of 2019, Everett, class of 20. And as you said, nine straight years with the Duncan brother. I did confirm before the game that he is the last one. There will be no more Duncans after Robin. Nice passing, and a layup. Matt Verretta with nine points already on the beautiful cut. He averages five and a half a game. I'd like to see Bryant go to Earl Timberlake. I don't think that they've got the ability to stop him in the paint. And right on cue, Earl Timberlake with the jumper that falls. He's got four points. He averages 16 a game and also eight rebounds. Both of those marks third in the conference. What is Vermont doing that's so successful against this zone right now? They're breathing. They're taking their time. They're having fun. And Robin Duncan is the guy that can beat this zone. He's got a wide skill set, and I think that he's the catalyst of this offense. Out of bounds to Bryant. There's so much emphasis on the ball that making that cut along the baseline, that's perfect pitch and catch basketball. I, I love the pass by Duncan. And they've gotten under five on the shot clock several times, but they don't panic. Bryant continues to attack the rim. The ball is stolen away. Wide open three, TJ Hurley who has been hot of late, the freshman from Ontario. Attacking the rim is Hawkins. He lost it. He somehow gets it back in traffic. He flips it in. One of the things that Vermont is doing against this press is they're trying to score. And there's an old philosophy. If, if, if you don't go ahead and try to score, you're going to see it some more. So it makes sense. And there's that free, line, free throw line entry pass that I think is going to be there. Certainly feels like Vermont has dominated this game, but it's just a two-point game as Bryant has battled back after falling behind seven to nothing. Jared Grosso and the Bryant Bulldogs battling back into the game. We'll talk about his special relationship with his former boss at Iona when we return. More truck owners are switching to Ram, which means more people with holiday spirit are switching to Ram and more people with not so much, more people who love the cold, and more people who don't. More good Samaritans, more good neighbors, and more people covered in tree sap are switching to Ram. When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. Trash! 
living rent free in a hockey player's head? <laughs> or maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? As good a human being as I've ever been around and done more for me in my life, literally, than outside of my family, anyone in my life. And he's like a big brother to me. This guy was there for me every single day, calling me all the time, keeping me involved in basketball when times I couldn't get out of it. This group here, go do something special this year. Family on three, one, two, three. Legendary Iona head coach Tim Kloos, the most successful men's basketball coach in Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference history. And Jared Grosso was an assistant for him for eight years at Iona. And look at the job that Grosso's done. Before he came here, three wins. He's got him in the NCAA in the fourth year. Yeah, he's a fantastic coach, and he's a lot like Tim Kloos. Tim Kloos was a visionary, really dominated with fast-paced basketball, a brilliant basketball mind. And now you know he dominates it. He's, he's a, a star pickleball player. Mm. <laughs> he had some health issues. And Coach Grosso said he still talks to him two or three times a day. He got very emotional talking about his relationship with Coach Kloos. A turnover. Chance for Bryant to tie or take the lead. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but Coach Kloos wanted the guys to bring their hands into the middle. He said that's what he misses the most about coaching. That camaraderie, that teamwork is... Gross Bullock misfired on the three. You, you just don't get that at pickleball, do you? <laughs> Duncan operating at the free throw line. Spins down the lane and draws the foul. You know, once again, in the middle of the court, you've got one-on-one, -on -one and Robin Duncan is so smart. And he saw the mismatch immediately. There's no way that in the paint you're you're going to be able to keep him away from the rim with that spin dribble. And I thought that that he really took advantage of Sharif Gross Bullock defensively. Duncan to the line where he's just a 43% free throw shooter. It's his brother's fault. <laughs> they never let him shoot. Later tonight at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific over on ESPN, we've got a Pac-12 Pac matchup between UCLA and USC from Pauley Pavilion. It's also on the app, 9.30 tonight. Yeah. Talking to Duncan, I asked him about his role, and he said he embraces a Draymond Green approach to the game. He said, I'm surrounded by so many good scores. I focus on defense, rebounding, and being a ball mover. That, that's great recognition. And when we asked Coach Grasso which player scares you the most, he said Robin Duncan because he's the one that makes it go and controls the team in the tempo. Hawkins couldn't finish. Nice rebound, though, but thrown away. Vermont has numbers here, three on three. Driving to the rim, Penn lays it up and in. Wide open, left corner three, Brelsford off the back iron and rebounded by Penn. Bryant 0 for 4 from downtown. Three from the corner in transition, it's good. Aaron Deloney, the senior, first three of the game. Wild shot is up and in for Charles Pride. First time we've called out. Bryant's top dog. Pride, a senior from Syracuse, averages 15 a game and is among the best players the school has ever had in Division I. Over 1,300 career points. The zone isn't working, so you see a switching man-to-man -man by Bryant. It's the first time they've gone to this defense. And a foul is called against Bryant. Aaron Deloney is the best sixth man in the American East last year. And he opened this year against Brown with 32 points. This is a fantastic score, and the offense is clicking for the Catamounts. Near the midway point of the first half, the inbounds pass was turned over. Brelsford attacks the rim. Offensive foul.
Uh, in transition, it's a good idea to try to hit before the defense sets up. Now, I said that Vermont does not have any shot blocking. They do a pretty good job of using the take the charge mindset to replace the shot blocking. Already the sixth foul for Bryant, only two for Vermont as the layup is up and in. Largest lead of the game for Vermont. And a Bryant timeout. And to put this or, or in perspective, a technical foul. I think it's a technical foul because Jared Grasso was all in the referee's face. And I think that he wanted the technical foul. He needs to send a message to his players. They are not bringing that heat on defense. And to put it in perspective, Bryant averages 86 points per game. They're sitting on 13 points. So the line is T.J. Hurley, a freshman from Ontario, just across the border from Niagara Falls, Pelham, Ontario. He has really come on of late, 10 points a game over his last six after scoring just about two points a game in the first eight games of the season. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now what the problem is, that Bryant struggles against physical guards. In three games this year against Cincinnati, Liberty, and Brown, they really had problems with a backcourt that gets into your body, into your legs. In those three games, Bryant is 0-3. Three. three of their four losses this year also lost at Florida Atlantic, a team that's having a great year. They did notably beat Syracuse on the road on a last second shot by Sharif Gross Bullock. They also beat Towson, one of the best teams in the CAA. Robert, I want you to do me a favor. Write down 24-13. Let's see what the response is after the technical foul. And there's a certain art, is there not, for a coach when he gets a technical foul, if he thinks he's not getting a friendly whistle, sometimes it can make a difference. Well, it, it, it sends a message to the players that the coach is not satisfied and he expects more. This is a, a Bryant defense that I just am not really aware of. I, I think that they're moving very slowly. They're not aggressive. They're not into their man. And, and that has to change if they're going to make a comeback. Bryant's a team that loves to shoot three-pointers, make over nine a game, second in the league, 0 for 4 from downtown so far, and another foul. That is the third foul on Antoine Walker, who just checked back into the game. Okay, you need some recognition here. Coming through the lane, that's kind of a, it's a ticky-tack foul. But when you've got two and you've been sitting out the whole time, you've got all this excess energy, and now he's going to be a spectator for the next 9.33. Walker will sit with three fouls. This is Vermont's biggest lead of the game. As Pride Ding up on Penn. Nice passing, wide open three. Good rebound by Charles Pride for Bryant. Bulldogs will run. Into the game, Josh Ozabor for Bryant. Timberlake reverse layup, got the spin to go. Six points for Timberlake. He's made all three of his shots so far. Wide open three. And another good rebound in traffic by Earl Timberlake. Gross Bullock looking to go one on one. They can't cover Timberlake in the paint. He goes to the paint now, working his way to the rim, and an offensive foul. You saw he hooked as he went to the baseline side. Pretty easy call. I want you to watch right here. He uses his right arm to gain momentum. And Earl Timberlake was a top 50 recruit coming out of high school. He went to Miami, then he went to Memphis. This is his third stop. And with his size and athleticism, you know, 
he, he's got like a Zion Williamson approach where he's got the big body, he's athletic and powerful, and he's going up against guys that are much smaller and not able to cover him. He didn't need that, that chicken arm right. on the baseline. He's had some shoulder issues. He's had a couple of surgeries in recent years, but he was preseason All-America East in his first season in the league. Finn Sullivan back in for the Catamounts. If I was going to use a word to describe Vermont, I would say composed. Duncan a three. He's made only five all season, and Bryant rebounds the miss. Charles Pride fade away. And out of bounds to Vermont. Well, Ferretta wants to be a finance major. He's got his degree. Well, in the first half, he's been money. I like the start. You've got Vermont by nine. When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. Hey! You're trash! Living rent free in a hockey player's head? <laughs> or maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? Plus nine, Vermont, A-plus start for the Canamount, powered by Robin Duncan. Now remember, he said, I bring an approach like Draymond Green. He got the rebound, cleared it. Nice spin, gets a layup, good hustle. The ability to create, get his teammates involved. Yeah, Robin, I see what you're talking about. Draymond Green approach. And appropriate because Draymond Green, you've got green uniforms, and, mm. and, and he's been money. I like that. Thank you. Green is definitely the dominant color of Vermont, and they have been very strong so far with the nine-point lead. Robert Lee, Tim McCormick with you. We talked to Coach Becker. They got off to a slow start this year. He said this was probably the wrong schedule for this team. It was kind of a seven newcomers. They played a very demanding schedule. They played teams on the road like St. Mary's, USC. They lost to Iona at Mohegan Sun. They went to the Bahamas. They were on the road for 19 out of 21 days during one stretch in November, and they just couldn't get it together, couldn't get enough practice time. They've started to hit their stride, won five out of six now. Well, well, Robert, it's a brand new team. They're getting to know each other, and that road trip in November, 21 days, I mean, that, mm. that's a really bad NBA schedule. <laughs> Deloney, the senior from Portland, Oregon, six points as Vermont opens up now its biggest lead of the game, 12 points. I like Deloney. I really think he's a good ball player. Gross Bullock has been quiet. Only three points for Bryant, and the league's leading scorer is a foul is called on Duncan. That will be his second. Yeah, notice the ball movement. The spacing is tremendous. Nice jump shot by Deloney. And he needed a little bit of a bounce back against UMBC. Only one of nine. Remember, Jared Grosso said that Deloney's the only guy we really worry about from deep. So the line is Earl Timberlake, 65%. Monday, it is the highlight of the college football season. TCU takes on Georgia, the defending champs, in the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. We'll have pregame coverage all day, but for this matchup, we'll have you covered from every platform, TV, radio, digital, so many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. Tim, I know you uh, wanted to be picking Michigan in uh, this game. Okay, I bought my plane ticket to <laughs> L.A., and I, I watched that game, and I'm so disappointed. Think about this. Michigan throws two pick sixes, and they have the ball twice on the two-yard line, and come away with zero points and lose by one score. I'm still crying inside. I'm going TCU. Underdogs. I like the underdog. 
I, I think you're going to be wrong. Yeah, you never know. They're about a two-touchdown underdog in that game, but they will certainly give it their best and would be a real Cinderella story as the jump shot is up and in for Cam Gibson. All right, can I put on my optimistic hat right now for the Bulldogs? If anybody can make a comeback, it's a team that scores a ton of points. That's what Bryant does. Good work on the glass by Timberlake, who's been Bryant's best player so far. Beautiful mid-range game over a contest. A lot of weapons. And defensively, you, you just have to love the play of Cam Gibson. Fifth year of college basketball, second year with Vermont, transferred from Western Carolina. Timberlake has taken on the bulk of the score, and he has eight of the team's 17 points. I want you to notice when he shoots free throws, he has a little hitch in his shot. But in their last game against Binghamton, he made eight of 12, which is much better. Take a look at his release. A little pause, and it, I never think he's going to be a pure shooter unless he corrects that. You see it? Yep, sure did. Made two out of two, however. <laughs> Nine points now for Timberlake to match Verretto for the game's high score. Vermont has done an excellent job breaking the press and not turning it over, but is it the kind of thing that sort of builds up as wears you down as the game goes on? Well, when you get tired, you have two things happen. You get fouls and you get turnovers, so it's a good thing to watch moving forward. Timberlake going downhill, lost it, turns it over. T.J. Hurley running in transition. Vermont has led throughout. Bryant has turned it over eight times with only one assist. Penn off the mark with the three. Pride the rebound. Penn not much of a three-point shooter, 24% this season. Bryant wants to play so fast, I think it'd be really wise for them to take their time a little bit more. I had to do a double take. Is that Antoine Walker back in the game? I, I would go right at him. He's got three fouls, Robert. Jared Grasso rolling the dice. Antoine Walker, number one for Bryant in the game with three fouls and over five minutes to go as a timeout is called by Vermont. Catamounts lead it by 11. Barreto leading the way with nine points for UVM. Yeah, and, and he has been the five man, maybe the most important player for this team. At 6'8", 220, they need his size. He must be good. Plays with great passion. He's a really nice shooter from the perimeter. And in their last contest, 15 points, four rebounds. He only averages about five points per game. He's really come on of late. The graduate student from South Windsor, Connecticut, really playing, kind of finding his stride after missing three and a half years. Didn't really miss it, he just didn't play for three and a half years between his freshman year at Delaware back in 2018-19. He's a master's, pursuing a master's in accounting. As Antoine Walker goes back out of the game, you see him there with three fouls. Bryant turning up the defensive pressure here. Wide open three. It's good. Alary Ayo Falia. His first three of the game. His second three pointer of the season. Biggest lead of the game now for the Catamounts. And you mentioned it. Bryant's a team that averages 86 points a game. They don't even have 20 right now as Gross Bullock just hoists up a contested three. The rebound is fought for. And it is tied up. Yeah, notice the ball movement and Iofalia wide open. You know, when, when you look at Iofalia, he was a Rhode Island transfer just like Antoine Walker was. They really need him because of his size and length. I, I have to be honest, Robert, I think that Bryant came into this game expecting to be dominant. 
that they didn't understand the, the cultural DNA of Vermont. Remember, nine championships in the last 20 years. That's part of who they are is that culture. I'd rise up there. Mm. And you know, he'll shoot another three. Rebounded by Pride. Excellent transition defense by the Catamounts again. If Bryant wants to drive. Vermont won't let them get by. This is great containment defense. Wow. Gross Bullock has the pass shot off and then throws it out of bounds. The 11th turnover for the Bulldogs sends us to a timeout. All right, a little junkyard dog defense. It's swarming, it's stifling, and it forces the turnover. This is Vermont basketball at its best. When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. Hey, you trash! Living rent free in a hockey player's head? Maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. John Becker in his 12th season as head coach. He has won 20 games in every season except for the COVID year where they went 10 and 5. And I want to highlight that second note. He's tied with Tom Brennan. We do have to mention he's done that in 166 fewer games. Wow, wow. And what a beautiful story about how Coach Becker got into coaching. He spent five years at Gallaudet University. It's a, it's a school for the hearing impaired. And he had a 3-22 and 22 record. It's hard to find talented basketball players that are hearing impaired, but he took a salary of $5,000 because he wanted to be a coach. Like, how do you recruit a kid that you, you can't really talk to on the phone because they can't hear? Well, he learned to communicate, and he said one of the things that was interesting, the only way he could get their attention was to stop the floor so they'd hear the vibration. Mm. He's become an excellent, excellent communicator. I think that experience was part of it. He did say that Tom Brennan made this a good job. That's Vermont, true. for many years, wasn't good at all. They were not a good program, and Tom Brennan kind of took them from mediocrity into being one of the best teams, and Becker has continued that after the work Mike Lonergan did in between them as well. In the past six seasons, Vermont has had years that they've won 29, 28, and 27 games. Last year they went 28 and 6, 17 and 1 in the league. They won the league by six games. The, the impressive thing to me is that the last four years they've had the best post play. Remember, Anthony Lamb, two-time player of the year. Ryan Davis, two-time player of the year. Those are elite post guys. Now they're playing without any post game at all. That's so impressive when a coach can say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna build a system that fits my personnel. That's the way Vermont is playing. Antoine Walker is back in the game for Bryant with three fouls, down by 15 with 3.15 to go. And a foul. That'll be only the fifth foul against Vermont, so this will not result in free throws. Aaron Deloney his first. A really no perimeter threat whatsoever for Bryant in this first half. Here's the storyline. The Canamount guards are exceptional controlling the dribble. Here's a three. Well off the mark, rebounded easily by Cam Gibson. Bryant 0 for 7 from beyond the arc. Do, do you think that's the shot that Coach Grosso wants? Your center shooting a three two feet beyond the three-point line. I, I don't think so. And I would go right inside and go right to the rim because Walker does not want to cover. Shooting it over him, it's rebounded by Latimer. 
Bryant just has not been able to score in transition, which is such a huge part of their game. Latimer flips it up and in. First field goal in over six minutes. Yeah, looked like Latimer got away with a shuffle of the feet. Just over two minutes to go. Vermont has led from the start. I want you to keep an eye on Barreto. This is a trip I would get him a touch flashing in the middle. Or Duncan. Wide open three. Rebounded by Walker. Two minutes. Two minutes in the first hand. Bulldogs dodge a bullet there as that shot was completely uncontested. Nice post feed. Triple team Timberlake pulling his way through and he traveled. When you get a triple team in the post, you have to understand that away from the court, you're playing four on two. Somehow you've got to jump up, clear the space. You're going to get a layup on the weak side. Mid-range jumper. Couldn't get the roll. Tipped up a couple of times and then out of bounds. To Bryant. You know, Bryant is struggling with their defense, and the reason I know that, next to their bench, they have something called the turkey board. And it's really kind of a neat story. The, the turkey board says that if you get three stops in a row, you get a turkey. And the Bryant squad has found that if they get seven turkeys in a game, meaning seven different times they get three stops, over the last five years, they win 98% of their games. So far tonight, zero turkeys. And there you see the turkey as Sharif Gross Bullock knocked in a two. He's got five points. A long two, his foot was on the line. Trying to answer with three is Verretto. The threes have not really been falling for Vermont either. Four out of 18, 22%. Gross Bullock trying to heat up, lobs it down low. Nifty finish attempt by Timberlake. Here come the Catamounts with under a minute to go. This is the equivalent of a Nolan Ryan shutout. Remember, Bryant averages 86 points per game. They have 22 and we're approaching halftime. Coach said 70 points would be a key mark. They're going to have a lot of work to do to get there, but a stop and a score here would give them some momentum. They've got the ball with 15 seconds to go and can hold for the final shot. Should I use Justin Verlander instead to keep it more current? <laughs> There's a lot of viewers out there who don't know who Nolan Ryan is. The Express. Four seconds to go. Gross Bullock lost the ball. Won't get the shot off. Will not count. Will not count for Deloney, but an appropriate end to the half for Bryant. All Vermont in the first half. They open the game on a 7-0 run and control the first half 33-22. The top two teams in the America East preseason poll. It's the number one seed or the number one pick. Vermont dominating Bryant by 11 at the half. Stop. I feel like a turkey sandwich after hearing the gobble <laughs> there, but so far it's not working. Three turkeys is not good enough. They need seven to have almost a guarantee of winning. And I, I do think that Jared Grasso is a mad scientist. I think he's got a really deep defensive playbook, and I'm sure he's going to dial something special up for us in the second half. Grasso not giving thanks for the first half his team played, but I'll pose this question to you. What do you think the message was at halftime in the Bryant locker room? How can they get back in this game? Oh, I, I think there were some expletives shared. I think that the, the wallpaper was probably curling up and cringing at the fact that, that there was some yelling going on by Jared Grasso. This is an intense guy, and, and he said that we want to be nasty. He used that term several times during our conversation. First half, Bryant was not nasty at all. But certainly not an insurmountable lead. Only 11 points. This team is an explosive scoring team, one of the top 10 in the country. And they can fill it up quick. They need to get some stops and start doing it at both ends. First half, three-point shooting. Bryant 0 for 7. And Bryant had one assist in the first half. They now have 14 turnovers and one assist.
And actually, yes, he completely changed his outfit. He had a white shirt on with no tie and a sport coat. He's gone to the polo shirt. I liked it. I actually liked <laughs> his outfit. But talk about a change. I thought they would change their defense. He changed his outfit instead. I like it. Maybe allow him a little more mobility over there on the sideline. Yeah, you're going to see a lot more trapping defense from Bryant. They're going to be more aggressive in attack. But Antoine Walker is a guy with foul trouble that cannot gamble. And he does a good job contesting the Duncan hook shot. Bryant gets a stop to open the half. Driving to the rim, Sharif Gross Bullock and draws the foul. Gross Bullock, the leading scorer in the America East at 17 points a game. Has just five, but he'll go to the line. Well, you're exactly right. He's off to a slow start. We featured him in the open. He told me that when he was seven years old, his mom put a ball in his hand and said, you were built to play this game. She helped him, she encouraged him, and it worked out really well because he came off a game of 29 points last time out against Binghamton. He's a 70% free throw shooter. He was actually teammates with Earl Timberlake, number zero, in high school at Rock Creek Christian down in Maryland. A current Bryant assistant coach, Chris Cole, was the head coach of that team. That's kind of where the connection comes from. Chris Cole is also very close with Kevin Durant, Maryland basketball legend. KD actually recorded a, a, a congratulatory video for their selection show last year. Gross Bullock actually said that KD told him, let your work show for itself. Three-pointer off the mark for Cam Gibson. Gross Bullock in attack mode, almost turned it over. It's on the floor and a timeout. Bryant will keep possession after a timeout. We'll step aside as well with under 19 minutes to go. Vermont by 10. Just a pea-sized amount of Lumi applied between your butt cheeks like this. I will demonstrate. Just kidding, I won't. Like this. We put Lumi to the test and compared it to a shower. 12 hours after a shower with soap and water, the average crotch has an odor score of five to six out of 10. 12 hours after a shower and applying Lumi, you're at a zero out of 10, no odor all day. I'm not a mathematician, but I think it means that Lumi is infinitely more effective than a shower alone. So just take a shower or shower with Lumi and be zero out of 10. Drive, it's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. On the left, Clark Kent, and then at halftime, he went into the phone booth, and on the right, he's hoping he's now Superman. An <laughs> unprecedented <laughs> wardrobe change for Jared Grosso. And for the, our listeners under 40 out there, Google what a phone booth is. You can look it up online. Oh, but. my goodness. I've never seen that, Robert. And, and look, it, it's a change of mindset. Before the game, he had his $3,500 Armani suit on, <laughs> looking sweet with a nice silk shirt on. And he, and he said, we're blue collar. I, I'm going to put on some slacks and some slip-ons, a golf shirt, and, and we'll see if his team takes his initiative. I bet there's a great story. He probably ripped his shirt off and <laughs> threw it against the wall and stomped on it. Uh, that's the kind of enthusiasm I love about his coaching. Out of the timeout, Bryant trying to generate a good offensive possession, unable to do so. Poor pass, 15th turnover of the game against just one assist. The better defensive team is winning this game. And at the free throw line. And that's a turkey right there. That's three straight stops to open the half for Bryant. Yet to really take advantage on offense, though. Wide open in the corner of three. It's good. And once again, the value of the bucket is it allows you to set up your press. First three-pointer of the game for Bryant. Pride with five points, and the lead is cut to seven. Far from an insurmountable deficit at halftime. Only 11 points, trailed by 15 at one point in the first half. Down low, and the reverse layup's up and in for Robin Duncan. You know who's smiling on that play? Tom Brennan. Mm. He had the fundamentals, the DNA of sharing the basketball, spreading the court, making the extra pass. Pride just hit a three, kicks it out, extra pass, right corner three. 
good fight for the rebound underneath by Pride, but it comes away to Vermont. You mentioned Tom Brennan. Special milestone at stake tonight, right, Robert? Mm. John Becker with a win would set the all-time wins record at Vermont, number 265, long three. Deloney, he got it. Quickly the other way, Pride off glass and in. Jared Rosso was saying that the perfect possession to him is getting a layup within seven seconds. That was an example right there of what he loves. It's like Mike D'Antoni really started that back in the NBA with the Phoenix Suns and Steve Nash. Well, Jared was saying that, that he's shown his team clips of Paul Westhead and Loyola Marymount back in the late 80s, how fast they played. That's his goal. Bryant certainly controlling the tempo in this second half. Pride off the mark of the three. Strong rebound by Walker. Hook shots up and in. Man. I, I'm going to tell you right now, Walker did not have that left-hand jump hook when he was at Rhode Island. Mm. Four points now for Walker as Bryant coming alive offensively. First half of the shot clock, it almost looks like Vermont is running a dummy offense just to keep Bryant on the defensive end. That's a tool to slow the tempo. Deloney contested three, bangs it. 12 points for Aaron Deloney. He's hot. Walker, nice spin move, scores and a foul. The action picking up here with under 16 to go. Al, who's the hot man? One thing left hand jump hooks and Deloney spreading the court and shoot around. The coach has said the one guy we fear is Deloney. Just a pea sized amount of Lumi applied between your butt cheeks like this. I will demonstrate. Just kidding, I won't. Like this. We put Lumi to the test and compared it to a shower. 12 hours after a shower with soap and water, the average crotch has an odor score of five to six out of 10. 12 hours after a shower and applying Lumi, you're at a zero out of 10, no odor all day. I'm not a mathematician, but I think it means that Lumi is infinitely more effective than a shower alone. So just take a shower or shower with Lumi and be zero out of 10. Drive, it's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. True story. The SEC plays hard-nosed basketball. This is going to be a heavyweight fight. And when it's Big Blue Nation against the rising tide, you better bring your hard hats. Experience Kentucky, number seven, Alabama, Saturday at 1 on ESPN. Oscar Shibway, freshman Brandon Miller, some of the headliners in that matchup. Here it's Vermont in the America East game of the year between the top two teams in the preseason poll, leading Bryant by nine. And Bryant's got some work to do, and Charles Pride is the guy that can really get it done. You know, he's a late-night shooter, and we had a conversation today. He said he likes to shoot five to six nights per week after midnight. Well, last year, the coaches were looking for one of their managers. His name is Brand Braden Juno. He wasn't at practice, which was at 8 in the morning. And the coaches were upset, and they called and tried to find Braden. And he, Charles said, it was my fault, coach. We shot until 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> Remember, it was 8 o'clock in the morning, and Braden fell asleep. He slept through his alarm because he was up till 3.30 in the morning. And, you know, that's the job that the people don't understand how hard they work the hours and they get a, a, a pair of shoes and a couple pair of shorts and a hoodie. Uh, great, nice job. Coach Grasso said that you're the best manager in all of college basketball. There you go. Got some airtime on ESPNU tonight as well. Walker unable to complete the three point play. The scoring has picked up here to start the second half. Six on the shot clock. Deloney with a couple of threes in the second half. Here's a contested three, and it's good. Robin Duncan, six three-pointer of the season. He's got nine. Gross bullet, bullet pass, and a foul. Wow, what a delivery here. And that, that's a deep three right in front of the bench. Remember, his brothers wouldn't let him shoot. They both played for Vermont. 
He's the youngest, and he only got to rebound and mm. then pass it out to his brother. You know, he showed them right there that he's just as good a shooter in the family. His brother made over, Ernie made over 300 here at Vermont, second all time, and shot 42%. Speaking of which, another three for Antoine Walker, who is hot. Alley Hoop couldn't finish it. Iofelia couldn't finish the alley oop. Now Bryant's on the run, down by nine. Turnaround jumper, Walker feeling it. This one a little bit off the mark. Duncan, beautiful skip pass for a wide open. Deloney buries it. Aaron Deloney's third three-pointer of the second half. He has 15 points. What a massive mistake to lose Deloney wide open at the three. Robert, at shoot around today, they talked over and over about finding Deloney and not leaving him. He's got nine points to start the second half. Huge mistake. So it'll be Tyler Brelsford going to the line. No, no, not a shooting foul, actually. Not a shooting foul, so they'll inbound the ball from the baseline right. Walker has been very aggressive here to start the second half. Although he's actually out of the game right now, and they foul. Brelsford is second. I would like to see Vermont go again to Robin Duncan in the middle of that zone. Two or three swing passes and then get him the ball. I think that Duncan, even though she's playing power forward, is the best playmaker on this Vermont squad. The good news for Bryant is they've already scored 13 points in the first six minutes or so of the second half. The bad news is they've given up 14 points, so the lead's actually gotten larger despite the offensive onslaught. John Becker, six-time America East Coach of the Year, has led the Catamounts to six straight regular season titles and four of the last six America East Tournament Championships, although one of those years, we should note, was the COVID year where they were named the champion despite no tournament being played. They were the regular season champion. Chauncey Hawkins lost it on the way to the basket, and he's tied up. A jump ball, the air will favor Vermont. Yeah, this should have been a travel. He lost it, he kept moving. Maybe he didn't have possession of it. But when you look at the abilities on the perimeter of Chauncey Hawkins, this is a guy that has some speed, jet quick. You know, he's taking uh, classes in cryptocurrency. Hmm. How's that class going these days? <laughs> Foul. 85 feet from the basket. Big games highlight our January schedule. The NFL Week 18 season finale features a Saturday doubleheader, Chiefs Raiders, then Titans Shags for the AFC South. Sunday, FCS title game, Dakota Marker, North Dakota State, South Dakota State, and then Monday, the big one, TCU and Georgia, the college football playoff championship game. Another foul. You know, one of the interesting things about both of these squads is that they're missing big men. Uh, Vermont had Nick Fiorello, 6'8", 225. He was hurt in the Bahamas, may not play this year. And then also Kayvon Kramer, 6'7", 225, a real key player. Got just a killer flu and, and has missed a lot of time. He's getting closer to coming back for Bryant. As they said, he's a real high riser. Freakish athlete. Deloney's had the hot hand. He kicks it for a Finn Sullivan three. Rebounded on the weak side by Earl Timberlake. Hawkins, a little out of control here. Gross Bullock to the rim, throws it over the backboard. 
<laughs> it's still active shooting, though, isn't it? Yeah. I believe so. I mean, Would have had to do some interesting geometry there, but yes. Yeah. Notice the defense staying down in a stance. The three C's. Third foul and dunk. The, the three C's. That's the fourth foul. I missed one. That's a big foul. No, there's no doubt because he is their number one catalyst. You know, when, when I talk about the three C's of defense, the first is contain. Being able to stay in a stance, keep your man on the perimeter, that will really help your rebounding too. The second one is contest. A shot goes up, you live with a contested outside jump shot. And the third one, which I think they're best at, is communicate. They're really talking. When they switch, they know where they're going. This is a defensive clinic. I want to say it again. Bryant averages 86 points per game. They're number seven in the country. They are going to have a tough time cracking 55 in this game. Duncan goes to the bench with four fouls. Dylan Penn comes in, another foul against Bryant. Sharif Gross Bullock, his second. Robert, are you surprised when you look at this Vermont team to see that they're seven and eight? Mm. I mean, they're, with this defense, if they carry this forward, they're not going to lose a whole lot the rest of the way. And they haven't lost much in this league over the last 20 years because of shots like that. TJ Hurley with seven points. He has potential to be the next Vermont star, just a freshman. And a foul. And that's saying a lot, too, because you know, a, a lot of teams are loading up on transfer portal players. But John Becker has said, yeah, we can supplement what we're doing with some older guys. But they have four freshmen that they really like. And he said, that's the way you have sustainability. Bring in young guys, teach them your culture, and eventually they're your juniors and seniors that lead the way. Deloney gets a big hand, one of those seniors, as he checks out. He's a four-year player for Vermont. This matches the biggest lead of the game. Walker's back in for Bryant. Gross Bullock has been quiet, only six points, just missed a couple of free throws. He's forcing the issue, and he is fouled. Yeah, the Cats are happy. They're stretching out their lead. 15-point lead. Defense wins. When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. Hey, you trash! Living rent free in a hockey player's head? Or maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. Last year, Vermont hoisted its ninth America East Championship trophy in the last 20 years. Player of the Year, Ryan Davis, with 20 points. Two-time Player of the Year, including last season, Ben Shungu also had 19 points as Vermont blew out UMBC, which has been the most common championship matchup in recent years. Vermont winning the America East title again, fourth time in the last six years, ninth in the last 20, and leading Bryant, a newcomer to the league, by 15 here on a Thursday night. Aaron Deloney has caught fire. He's got five three-pointers in the game. Well, plus 21 points for Vermont from three, and Deloney, has been a perfect culture player. He understands that if you play for this Vermont team, the expectation is that you're gonna play exceptional defense, you're gonna be able to move the ball, you're gonna help rebound, and early in the year, the reason they're seven, eight, they're just a little bit too young. But, but that culture means a lot. As a matter of fact, Dylan Penn was saying that last year, he really wanted to get to the NCAA tournament, but 
you know, his team wasn't going to be able to go this year. So he thought about quitting basketball. And he said, you know what? I'm going to look at the transfer portal. He totally gravitated towards Vermont because he wants to play in the NCAA. Gross Bullock is really struggling from the line. Bryant now one out of six from the free throw line. Bullock has missed three in a row. That was the front end of a one and one. Yep, yeah, his team, Bellarmine, actually won their tournament last year, but they were ineligible to go to the NCAA tournament. And they couldn't go this year either. That's right. why he's here to play for an NCAA. Quick three. Rebounded by Sharif Gross Bullock. Pride attacks the rim and lays it in. Right. That was one of the few defensive meltdowns that we've seen from Vermont. They've given up very few layups in this game. Vermont has led throughout. This is the first of two meetings between these two schools. They'll play again on the last Saturday in February down in Smithfield, Rhode Island at Bryant, February 25th. Hurley's three is an air ball rebounded by Timberlake. Long outlet pass ahead for his teammate, Gross Bullock. Quick three. Rebounded by Ferretto. Robert, I've got a number for you that I think is going to paint a picture that you're going to really appreciate. Against this attack style defense, Vermont for the entire game, four turnovers, zero in the second half. Pull up jumper, gets his own rebound. Cam Gibson lays it in and a foul. Yeah, flex Cam, because that might be the best play of this game. Brian is always on the verge of making a comeback. Then all of a sudden, you turn a possibility to run into a bucket three-point play. Yeah, show those muscles. Man, look at those guns. What you'd expect from a guy from Cincinnati, as you said, a Western Carolina transfer. Averaging six and a half a game this season. He's got four now as Ozabor back in for Antoine Walker. As Bryant looking for an answer here. Could fall behind by their largest deficit of the game if Gibson makes the free throw. Seven out of 11 from the line this season. Kind of an interesting conversation with John Beckert today because he said, you know, we're dead last in college basketball in offensive rebounding but we have one of the best transition defenses, so we have to balance when we go to the offensive glass. He thinks it's more important in this game to get back and make Bryant play half-court basketball. Good passing. No one wants to take the shot now. It's Gross Bullock who hoists the three and knocks it down. Timeout, Bryant. Danger zone. Don't let Gross Bullock get hot because he's the one guy that can take over the game. Yeah, maybe the best China. sequence that we've seen. Bryant, a five pass possession China. by Bryant, getting everybody involved, beautiful delivery. And when the ball is clicking, that's all of a sudden the time that your shot feels a little bit better. When you saw in the background of that shot, there was three on the shot clock. How do you balance pushing the tempo and, and playing with pace, but still getting a good shot every time down the court? You know, I think that part of the challenge that Jared Grasso has had is that with so many new players, it takes a while to get this unique system in place. You know, when you think about Paul Westhead and Loyola Marymount, they just ran up and down at a, at a fever pitch, and, and their defense never really caught up. I don't think that Bryant's defense has matched their effort on the offensive end in this game. Still plenty of time to go, just about the midway point of the second half. Vermont leads it by 13. Yeah, remember, who's most likely to make a comeback? A team that can score points in a hurry, and that's Bryant. And see if that press starts to wear down Vermont here. And you don't see teams press, you know, the, the old Arkansas 40 minutes of pressing. It's kind of uncommon now. Yeah, you're right, and but I do think Kids like to play it. It's a player-friendly system. Coach Grasso said that's why he thinks they get a lot of transfers, because guys want to play in a high-scoring system with a high tempo. Gross Bullock on the run. Timberlake working his way to the rim. Couldn't get the roll. Tipped it up and in. 11 for Timberlake. 
Wow. That was some kind of reaction by Timberlake. But when you miss a layup, you're the first one to know that it's not going in. Everybody else thought, oh, he's close, it's point blank. He's probably going to make it. Foul is caught on Ozabor. What an NBA Friday doubleheader we have for you. The Nets, who have been so hot, square off against the Pelicans at 7.30 Eastern. Then we'll take you to the desert for the Hun Suns hosting the Heat. Our coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern. And do you think that KD is tuning into our broadcast to watch <laughs> one of his guys, Sharif Gross, bowl on play? I hope so. Boy, the Nets have been playing well. Uh, I, I just, um, I love the response by Kyrie. Mm. And, and, you know, he's back in, he's totally engaged, and the Nets are completely capable of winning it all. Verretto's jumper is up and in. He thought it was no good. Went to follow the shot. He's got 11. Turnover. T.J. Hurley is fouled. 18th turnover for Bryant. You know, the, the middle's wide open, and Verretto told me before the game, He's been working on this foul line jump shot all week in preparation for playing against Bryant. Man, I'm glad nobody was hurt. In the NBA, that would have been a flagrant foul. Instead, it will send TJ Hurley to the line. You like Hurley a lot, don't you, Robert? I, you know, he's... Kind of that Vermont player they have. He's a 6'5". You know, he's just a freshman. Clearly going to be a good shooter. He's shooting 45% from the arc this season. Yeah, I, I was watching them at shoot-around, and I believe he's got the best release on the entire team. Mm -hmm. Right into the camera. I'm, I'm glad our cameraman wasn't hurt in that play. Locker charge. He, he never lost sight of the ball. He stayed committed to his job. Good job, James. I think it was a charge. It's going the other way. Hurley now 14 out of 14 from the line in his career. Extends the lead back out to 15. Another bad pass, another turnover. And then stolen back. And almost stolen back again. Yes, it is. Now Vermont on the run. Helter Skelter sequence. Forcing the issue in a foul. Uh, when you're 14 for 14 from the free throw line, you want to try to get to the line. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was high energy. The guys are trying. The pace has tired everybody out a little bit, and that's when mistakes happen. But, Robert, isn't that true? If you haven't missed a free throw all year, you've got to find ways to create contact. Yep. And he's a smart player. I know that he knew his team was in the bonus. All he has to do is drive and draw contact. He's going to get two points. He's into double figures now. 20 turnovers for Bryant. Vermont has five. Missed it. Ten points now for Hurley. Pride has been very quiet. Only nine points. Nice pass underneath for a missed shot by Latimer. But he will go to the line. When I watch Vermont defend, John Becker's philosophy defensively reminds me of Bo Ryan when he was at Wisconsin. A lot of defensive players, they cover from the waist up, but Bo Ryan had his guys defend down low. Take a look at that turnover number right there. And the points, half, basically half the points they normally score, there's still eight minutes to go. And they just haven't been able to hang on to the ball. But back, back to my point. When Bo Ryan taught defense, he had his players defending with their legs and their hips. It's completely different than the way other teams defend, and it can really catch you off guard. It's clearly done that with Bryant. Hurley gets a big hand as he checks out of the game. 
Bryant finally makes a free throw. They're two out of eight from the free throw line this half. And they're reaching desperation point here, down by 15 with eight minutes to go. Half to start getting stops. Several stops in a row and scoring to capitalize. Deloney's back in the game. Deloney pulls up. Rebounded by Walker. Gross Bullock going one on one and foul. And Finn Sullivan is down. And I believe he was called for the foul, which is his fourth. Under eight to go, Vermont maintaining a 15 point lead. More truck owners are switching to Ram, which means more people with holiday spirit are switching to Ram. And more people with not so much. More people who love the cold. And more people who don't. More good Samaritans. More good neighbors. And more people covered in tree sap are switching to Ram. When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. Hey, you trash! Living rent free in a hockey player's head? Or maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? Coming off an NEC title, Jared Grasso and Bryant have been on the short end of the score tonight. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now, Jared Grasso has his players' attention now. He says that, oh, so you think you play hard, right? You think you're really good. Guys, you have a long way to go to reach our goal. Remember, they want seven turkeys. That's getting a stop three times gives you one turkey. They've got a long way to go in that area. And their goal is 40 deflections per game. They're not even close. They've got three turkeys and they want seven. And as Jared Grasso looks at that stat sheet, he's saying to himself, they haven't turned the ball over against us. They don't have any fear. They've been completely composed. This is a perfect time for teaching his guys. And he said his guys weren't necessarily excited to be playing on national television like they are tonight. They've done that a lot at some of their other stops, but they've talked about Vermont from the very start of practice. They said Vermont is the standard in this conference, and that they're the standard we're trying to reach. So they didn't shy away from talking about how Vermont has dominated the league. They will now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're getting a first-hand look at it, although the game is not over yet. 11 points for Gross Bullock, pulls to within 13. Yeah, and the player response is, oh, so that's what you were talking about, how hard we have to play. I get it now. It's a five-hour bus ride home back to Rhode Island after the game tonight here in Burlington. Gross Bullock, his third. Yeah. And unprecedented. I, I've never seen a coach do a halftime wardrobe adjustment. Jared Grasso had this sweet looking outfit before the game, a nice suit. And he took it off. He went blue collar in the second half, and it did not work so far. He's got to go warm up suit for the ride home, right? Sweats. Go yeah, sweats. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Got to be comfortable on a long ride like that. All right. Down 13, plenty of time left, but you've got to try to get the ball to the paint. I think that Timberlake is an underutilized resource. He wants the ball, just can't get it. Taking it to the rim and scoring again is Sharif Gross Bullock, who's up to 13 points and cuts the lead to 11. All right, this is a different look. Full court, man-to-man -man pressure. They've been in a 2-2-1 full court. This is just a different look, but look how spread out they are. The lane is wide open. Robin Duncan in the game with four fouls. This is Penn, and he's fouled. Latimer, foul. Latimer, the foul, his second. This will be two shots for Aaron Penn. 
Dylan Penn at the wall. Excuse me, Dylan Penn. Dylan Penn. Friendly roll. Later tonight, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific over on ESPN. Pac-12 matchup between UCLA and USC from Pauley Pavilion. You can also stream it on the app. Uh, I've got a man crush on Hami Haikas. I, I think that I think that he's such a good ball player. He could play for Vermont. Yes. Six points now for Penn, Dylan Penn, as Duncan goes out with four fouls. Vermont has done a good job from the line. It's been an area of struggle for Bryant, particularly in the second half, missing a lot of opportunities from the line. Are you noticing where the ball staying? Nothing to the paint. Mm. Good take and finish by Timberlake, who's up to 13. And it only takes a you know, 4 6 0 oh run, and all of a sudden, you're right back in the game down 7 or, seven or 8. Got to get some stops, though. It seems like everybody on this Vermont team can handle the ball. That was an easy one to see. That's his third foul. And you're putting a, a very good free throw shooter at the line. Actually, fourth foul on Gross Bullets. The player development is really good for this Kanama team. They, um, they all can dribble pass shoot. They all use their left and their right hand. And they use great balance when they drive. Hurley, the son of two coaches, mom and dad. And he continues to do work from the line. Played his prep ball at the Rock School down in Gainesville, Florida. We mentioned he's from Ontario, just across the border from Niagara Falls. 12 points now for Hurley. He is the third Vermont player in double figures. He'll check out of the game. Cam Gibson back in. You know, I'd like to go back and see Niagara Falls again. It's been a long time. This is not the best time of year to ride the Maid of the Mist, but it is a spectacular <laughs> sight. 15 for Deloney, leads Vermont. Hurley with 12. Three-pointer, halfway down and out for Pride, and rebounded by the Catamounts. And the challenge for Bryant is that this Vermont team is going to take their time and make you spend some time on That's That's an uncharacteristic trip for Vermont. Long outlet pass ahead to Gross Bullock, who's double teamed. Timberlake attacks the rim. And a blocking foul against the Catamounts. Robert, on, on this drive right here, I, um, I look at Earl Timberlake, and I, I, I wanted to talk to you all night about this because I think it's a new trend in college basketball with the transfer portal. There's no way that Earl Timberlake would have ever committed to Iona or any other small school out of high school. He's a top 50 recruit. But because Jerry Grasso got to know him, made that commitment, developed a relationship with him when he was in high school, when he went to Miami and then transferred to Memphis, when he is ready to move on again, he had already developed that relationship with a blue chip athlete. I think you're going to see a lot of college coaches try to go up a level and recruit kids they have no idea they could ever get with the hope that if they commit somewhere else in two years, you might have a shot in the transfer portal. What, what do you think about that idea? Well, I think so much of the focus in the transfer portal is guys who go from small schools to big schools. But it does work the other way. Guys, quote unquote, go down a level to mid-major or low-major and can really, you know, enhance their pro prospects by putting up big numbers and getting a lot of playing time. Both Walker and Timberlake are high D1 recruits that are really thriving at mm. this level. Yeah. And Coach Grasso said, we got guys like Scott Machado at, at uh, Iona, you know, led the country in assists. He ended up in the NBA for a little while. You know, guys want to play a high tempo, and stats do matter when you're talking about professional prospects. Nice finish there by Moreno. Long pass ahead for Walker, makes a nice catch in traffic. Walker close to the rim, pushes it up and in. 
into double figures with 11 for Antoine Walker. And although Vermont has controlled this game, still an 11-point lead with under five minutes to go. Not insurmountable by any means. In this game, Bryant has, has never been out of it, but it always seems like Vermont's got another gear. Mm. Every time Bryant has crept to within maybe single digits, Vermont has had an answer. A lot of times it's been Deloney. Nifty move, couldn't finish it over Walker. Chance to get into single digits for the first time in the second half. Gross Bullock scoops it up. Follow jam! And there they go. They got the single digits. It looks like a technical foul. Was wow. it hanging on the rim? Was it taunting? Let's take a nice foul. Bullock hit Gross Bullock is ejected from the game. And what a turn of events because Bryant just made it a single digit game. They've got some momentum. And Sharif Gross Bullock, the leading scorer in the conference, is ejected from the game. Yeah, let, let's take a look at the finish. We didn't see what he did. He might have complained to the official that he didn't get a foul call there. But is that enough to get an ejection? I always feel like when a player gets kicked out of a game, look at his stats. Frustration can lead to issues. Gross Bullock, two for eight. Six points, subpar performance for him. And I think it was actually two technical fouls because Deloney's shooting four free throws. Now, Gross Bullock already had four fouls, so technically he finishes with six fouls in the game. Two out of four from the line for Deloney. All right, let's see if we get a better look here. And it looked like he may have made contact with the official there. It's tough to see as it was the camera was moving to the left. But he was definitely saying something to the official and he has been ejected from the game. And Vermont gets the ball with an 11 point lead. Sharif Gross Bullock is Bryant and the conference's leading scorer. No contact. We're told no contact in that interaction. He was just uh, vocalizing his displeasure. Penn's push shot is rebounded by Walker. Wide open three. Needed that one. Walker comes up with the offensive rebound, kicks it out for Pry. Second chance opportunity for Bryant. Walker hoists the three. Way off the mark. Rebounded by Vermont. Those three-point numbers have killed Bryant in this game. Jared Grasso is imploring his guys to go harder, but Robert, you can see it. They don't have anything left in their legs right now. Vermont looking to put it away with a couple more scores. As a foul is caught on Walker, it's his fourth. John Becker and the Catamounts, three minutes away from possibly a record-setting victory. Take a pea-sized amount. That's it. I rub my fingertips together like this. Apply it like a lotion. Fingertips. Pits. Under boob. Thigh folds. Butt cracks. Feet. About 98% of our customers use our cream deodorant on places other than pits. This water-based cream, I'm telling you, it rubs in like a lotion. It's invisible on the skin. It works like a dream. Why didn't someone think of this sooner? I am what hunger looks like in America. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. There's Tom Brennan, who currently shares the Vermont all-time wins record with 264. 
he may only share that record for another two minutes and 57 seconds. Because John Becker is closing in on win 265. I, I think he was saying I'm number two now. <laughs> he has Not an, yet. He has an infectious personality. What a good man, a legend. Everybody loves him here. When he walked in, he was like the mayor. Oh, yeah. His name's on the court. He used to have a morning radio show in town. Yeah. And, and he also still does some work on radio. And he's got a sweet scarf on. <laughs> I liked your Miami Vice reference there. Don Johnson would be proud. <laughs> We've had a lot of like 80s-ish references here tonight. Nolan Ryan, Miami Vice. I did some of my best work in the 80s. Yes, that's, you that's did. Why. Former Michigan Wolverine back in the early 80s was a first-round draft pick in 1984. You were the one that dropped the phone booth on our, our young <laughs> yes, phone booth. Yes. So you're helping out. Look it up. Offensive foul. And that will be on Timberlake. His fourth. Here's a painful number for Bryant fans. They average 86 points per game. Number seven in the nation. They never led tonight. They're down, they're back of their scoring average by 31 points. 21 turnovers do not help the cause against just four assists. How about three for 15 from three? It has not been Bryant's night. There will be better days for them, although this game not over yet. Still two and a half minutes to go. Three-pointer. Long rebound tracked down by Brelsford. Pride, quick three. Rebound between two Vermont players. Goes straight to Bryant. Almost another turnover. They keep control with 15 on the shot clock. Look at the ability to cut off the drive. Woo. Jump ball, sensational on ball defense by Robin Duncan. Robin Duncan might as well grab some brick and mortar and build a wall around the lane. Nobody can get to the rim against this defense. That was a clinic right there, moving your feet not reaching, using your body. Like Draymond, right? Exactly. Bryant needs to score just about every time it has the ball the rest of the way. Three pointers up, no good. Long rebound tracked down by Walker. Pride all alone for three. And it has been not a great shooting night for Bryant as they will pick up a foul and go to the free throw line. It's called against Alari Ayo Falaya. By the way, using brick and mortar to build a wall around the lane would be completely illegal. You would get a technical mm. foul. It cannot do that. Noted. Timberlake back to the line. Well, he is five out of six. This is such a growth opportunity for Bryant. We did not see their best game today, but they're capable of so much more. This is a team that has a winning DNA, best season ever in D1 last year. 22 wins, first ever NCAA tournament in Division I. Well, nine non-conference wins this year is their best in school history, so this in no way derails their plans. I actually think that this is the best thing that could have happened because they're going to come off this. In practice tomorrow, there's going to be a lot of jawing. There's going to be a lot of sprints. There's going to be a lot of film work. And at the point where you're kind of disgusted, that's where you can really make some massive improvements. Coming up next, we'll send it out to Kansas. Wichita State hosting Cincinnati. Drew Carter and Mark Wise on the call. Bryant still playing with maximum effort here. With down to 12 on the shot clock. Three-pointer. And the rebound to Brelsford. Still just a three-possession game with a minute and a half to go. A three here would be huge. Pride down the lane. Couldn't finish. Gets his own rebound and draws the foul. That will stop the clock with a minute 16 to go. Pride to the rim is such a manly player. I, I know this probably is not, not my right to say this because I have not watched a lot of Bryant basketball in the past, but don't you think that it, Charles Pride 
has to be considered to have his number raised into the banner some of the Un unquestionable banner up in the rafters and he came into the game fourth in their d1 era in scoring third in rebounding sixth in assists third in steals and you could make a case that he's their best ever player in division one and jared grasso created a vision during the recruiting process with charles charles had committed to weaver state uh, jared had offered him his first scholarship and came and said look I, I see us in the NCAA someday. I need you as part of this. So that kind of goes back to that recruiting philosophy. Target really, really good players that you don't think you can get. Share your vision and see what happens. They've cut it to seven, which is close enough to start fouling. I mean, I think it's not in some, you know, inconceivable that you could come back in this game. They do foul. Cam Gibson will go to the line, a 64% free throw shooter. He makes the first. Still a three possession game. Again, Sharif Gross Bullock was ejected from the game. He's Bryant's leading scorer at 17 points a game. Gibson makes them both smoothly. He's got seven points. Bryant down by nine, coming up in a minute to go. Brelsford lost it, and it's out of bounds to Bryant with a minute three remaining. Bryant still has one timeout left. I want to send a lot of praise to this Vermont team. They are loaded with high character guys that know this system well. And this crowd appreciating the effort from their beloved Catamounts tonight. Open three. It's good. And a timeout. Brelsford, his first three of the game, cuts it to a six point lead. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. 51 seconds to go here in Burlington. When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. Hey, you trash! Living rent free in a hockey player's head? Or maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. Bryant hits a three-pointer to cut the lead to six with 51 seconds left. 68-62, closest they've been in the entire second half. It's a two-possession game now. Brelsford keeps them right in it with this big three. And, and this is a specialty of this Bryant team, is scoring in a hurry. As a matter of fact, a drill that Jared Grasso took from Tim Kloos at Iona is they play their basketball scrimmages in practice and put 12 seconds on the shot clock. That means that you have to go up and down and get shots up in a hurry. It all comes off the defense. Let's take a listen at what Jared Grosso saying. He's breaking the huddle after. And stranger things have happened. Six points and a 51 seconds left. They're clearly going to try to get a turnover or foul and extend this game. Well, it, here's the beauty of what they're doing. If you get a stop and make a three, then all of a sudden it starts playing in your mind. Could we possibly lose what was perceived as an insurmountable lead? Vermont's made only one of its last seven shots. But Bryant has started to score some points from the free throw line with the clock stopped to get back within at least shouting distance down six. Vermont needs to execute down the stretch. The, the challenge is that Bryant would love to turn over Vermont. The problem is Vermont doesn't turn it over. Long touchdown pass ahead for Gibson. He lost the ball, but he's fouled. And he'll go back to the line where he just made two a moment ago. Latimer, his third. Foul number 20, Miles Latimer, his second team with a double bonus. Gibson is three out of four from the line tonight. And on the season, came in at about 65% in limited attempts. Cam Gibson, 
at the line. He'll have two shots. You know, this Vermont team ha has really been impressive. Remember, they lost four starters from last year, including two-time All-League standout Ryan Davis, who averaged 17 and 7. They lost three guards that combined to average 32, and they did not miss a beat in this game. Cam Gibson doing work from the line. He's made four in a row. He's got nine points, makes it a three-possession game. Bryant needs threes. They need them quick. High off the back iron, controlled by Vermont, and a foul. And that may have been Bryant's last gasp as this crowd at Patrick Gymnasium rises to its feet. Make two free throws, game over. All right, let's tell our viewers one more time about John Becker and what he just accomplished if they hang on. In the history of Vermont basketball, two coaches have won the most games. John Becker, who's on the sideline, and Tom Brennan, who's sitting along the baseline, have each 264 wins. This would be the tie-breaking 265th win and make John Becker the winningest coach in Vermont basketball history. How hard is it to win that many games? I mean, you hear about Coach K and some of these guys, but the longevity and the success over a sustained period of time. Yeah, this is the uh, this, this is the, the most impressive program in the American East Conference. What a beautiful town this is. This is Norman Rockwell. Mm. Up oh, there I go. You accuse me of an old school reference again, aren't you? What John Becker said, you know, the fan support is what makes this team and program so special. You know, there's not a lot of towns this size who identify with the team, it really differentiates them, and it's one of the reasons they can get great recruits to come here. This city actually reminds me of Olean, where St. Bonaventure is. The, the players are like pro athletes here. Everybody idolizes them. They walk through town, and they sign autographs. It's, it's a real great selling point for this coaching staff and, and for anybody that wants to play in a great town. I love it here. Brelsford makes two. Eight point lead now with 31 seconds left. They'll try to force a turnover. And they will foul. And force. As I want to make more free throws. Robert, as, as I watch this matchup, I have a feeling that we may see it two more times this year. I think you're right. Cam Gibson at the long shooting two. Gibson has been terrific from the line. Robin Duncan back in for Dylan Penn. What did you say his free throw percentage is this year? Because he, he's got a beautiful stroke. And a timeout. 30 second timeout, Vermont. Called by Vermont. Don't forget Cincinnati, Wichita State is coming up when we're done. The upcoming schedule for these teams for Vermont. Road trip at UNH and then at UMass Lowell, home for Maine, NJIT, and at Binghamton. Those games on ESPN+. Plus. At this point in the season, wouldn't you have to agree that the, the three heavyweights would be Vermont, and then Bryant, and the other would be UMass Lowell? Yeah, they have a strong team so far. You see Bryant goes home to take on UMBC and UAlbany. That they're at UMass Lowell later this month. But an argument could be made that it's Vermont and then those other teams <laughs> yes. until proven otherwise. I hear you. I, I hear you on that, and I agree. And, and when Tom Brennan and I spoke before the game, I said, what do you think, buddy? And he said, everything in America East goes through Vermont. And he was completely right tonight. And keep in mind, this conference plays its championship game at the highest remaining seed. So the regular season takes on even more importance because if you do make it to the final and you're the highest remaining seed, you host the championship game on your home court. A zone defense really extended to try to cover the three-point line. It worked. And that will be the final possession of the game as Bryant turns it over for the 22nd time. John Becker getting hugs on the sideline. The winningest coach 
surpassing that man, Tom Brennan. John Becker, 265 wins, winning as coach in Vermont basketball history. Final score, Vermont 74, Bryant 64. For Tim McCormick, our entire crew, great job here from Burlington tonight. Robert Lee saying so long. Final score, Vermont 74, Bryant 64. Let's send it to Cincinnati, Wichita State, Drew Carter, and Mark Watt.